Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you a couple ways that you can have any image fit into a particular shape of your choosing using some masking tricks inside of GIMP. So first off, load up any image or photograph you want to use to fit into the shape. And then a good way of getting custom shapes that we can use for these masking tricks would just be to go to Google, and you could type something like vector shape PNG in order to find a shape of your choosing. So what you're looking for are going to be these images that have these checkered transparent backgrounds because those transparent areas will be ignored. And then we'll take all the areas that actually have color information and that will be the shape where our image fits into. So just grab any PNG of a vector that you want and then we're going to load that into GIMP. So first off, I'm going to start with this square grunge texture, and I'm going to just pop that in as a second layer. So as you can see in this particular texturized image, everything is black. So that will be perfect for us to take the background image and layer that into this shape. So the next thing we're going to do is take this fire and water background image or your photograph, put that as the top layer. Then you can take the color information and have it fill in any of those black areas on the underlying layer by changing the mode here into lighten only. Now note this is going to work perfectly when the background image is black. So I can take that square texture, which if I hide the top layer you can see is still there, and I can move it around. So if I have this layer selected, I'll hold shift so that I'm only moving the active layer, and we can move this around the screen wherever we want to position it. Now as for the main image, if we have that layer selected and we move that around, the shape won't change its position, but what we actually show inside of that shape will. So by moving these two layers around, you can get exactly what you want to show in the position on the screen. However, if you're using a shape that isn't completely black by default, there's an extra step you need to do to be able to use this trick. So for right now, I will hide that background square image and let's go to my finder and I'll bring in this texture. So when I load this and you can clearly see there's some pink going on here, not everything's black. So when I move this as a layer under the fire and water, you can see it doesn't quite fill in correctly. So the way we can correct this is to go up to the colors menu and we'll go down to curves and we want to take everything that isn't black and just turn it down to black. So the way we do that is we just move this top right point all the way to the bottom right, hit OK. And now that's going to take that uh, love texture and the background and everything is now perfectly black, which means the light and only mode is going to work properly. So once again, we would just reposition the top image so we get the cool parts of the initial image to show through in our custom shape. Now, if you do go the route of using light and only, another thing to note is that it will apply to any layers beneath it. So if I add in another background layer, like so, and I fill it with black, then you'll see the whole image come back in. That's not what we want. So what you can do to get around that is creating a layer group. So if you do create a layer group and add it to the image, now move your main image and the shape that you're applying the light and only to into that layer group. And now the light and only will only apply to other layers inside of that group. So now you can fill the background image with whatever color you want. And it's not going to be a problem at all. Now, there's also another way that you can do this kind of masking, which is actually just to use a layer mask layer. So I'll delete these backgrounds for now. And I'll reposition this kind of in the center there. And let's re add in the love image to our GIMP document. Okay, so this time when we load it in, we're not going to mess around with the colors on this image at all. What we're actually going to do is create a layer mask for the background image. So the way we do that is we copy the shape of this love image onto the layer mask that we haven't created yet for the fire and water background image. So first off, select the layer that you want to use for the layer mask shape. Okay, so that is in the layers window. Then you right click that and you go alpha to selection. So this will give you a selection of all the pixels where there's actually color information inside of our shape. Now with that selection, we can right click on the main image and do add layer mask. So to get the layer mask from our selection, we choose initialize layer mask to selection. So that's gonna give us this shape in the same position. We click add. Okay, and uh, we can't see anything right now because the love image is covering it. But if we move this to the background and then we hide it now, 
and we can take the top image, the fire and water, and we no longer need it to be in light and only mode. So we can just put it as normal mode. Then we have the same result where our fire and ice image fits into the shape of our layer mask. So we can adjust both the base image by moving that around the screen. But note now the layer mask moves around with it. So you're going to need to move the layer mask around as well. So click on the layer mask and then move that to the position you want it to be on the screen. And very similarly, you can just play around with that a little bit until you get it in the position that you need it. If at any point you want to finalize this image and don't need to worry about the layer mask anymore, you can right click and then choose apply layer mask. And now the layer mask information is no longer there. All you have is this original image. So the rest of the base image no longer exists there at all. So be careful if you do finalize that. Oftentimes it would be better to just leave the layer mask there and then edit the layer mask as you need it. So that is a couple ways that you can use custom shapes in order to fit another image inside of it so that the image only shows in the shape of your masking image or masking layer. Inside of GIMP, I hope this video helped all of you out there. Thank you for watching to the end. I have been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.